at the beginning of this section, we said that there are two properties that make the standard basis of Rn easy to work with. The first property was that any two distinct vectors in this set are orthogonal. Now the second property, which we really haven't explored yet, is that each vector in this set is a unit vector. So we're now going to go ahead and combine this second property with the idea of orthogonality to establish the following definitions. So we say that a set of vectors in Rn is an orthonormal set if it is an orthogonal set of unit vectors. So this means that every vector in the set or each distinct pair of vectors in this set is orthogonal and all of the vectors have length one. The second definition is that an orthonormal basis for a subspace W of Rn is a basis of W that is an orthonormal set. Now before we go ahead and explore orthonormal sets with examples, let's pause for a cause and summarize. What are these definitions telling us? So our first note, if S is equal to the set of vectors, say vector Q sub 1 through vector Q sub K, and if S is an orthonormal set, then we know that the dot product of vector q sub i with vector q sub j is equal to zero. And we know this because all pairs of distinct vectors in the set are orthogonal. We also know that the length of vector q sub i is going to be equal to one. Because by definition, we know that all vectors in this set must be unit vectors. Now, the fact that vector q sub i is a unit vector is actually equivalent to saying that the dot product of this vector with itself is equal to one. Now with this last observation, we can go ahead and summarize the statement, S is orthonormal with the following inequality. So we can say that the dot product of vector Q sub I with vector Q sub J is equal to zero if I does not equal J, and the dot product is equal to one if i equals j.